Hey folks, um, so today, water in the UK, paper two, section C, um, which is uh, a choice actually, so it starts with question three, which is this one, um, food, water and energy in the UK, and then it moves on to um, global food, global water or global energy, but this is the one everyone needs to know, okay, and water in the UK is all about fresh water, where it is, who's got it, who hasn't got it, um, and this shape, if you're drawing this while I'm talking, this is supposed to just represent the UK, so this would be Cornwall, okay, uh, down here, and then up here is the north of England. All right, so not the full UK, but uh, this is uh, the area that we're looking at with water. So today we're going to look at Kielder Water, okay, and a transfer scheme that's been in place um, since the 80s. So this is the largest man-made um, lake in the UK, all right, and it's up here in the north of England. So if you just draw, um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna just color that in, this blue lake, all right, and then we'll give you some, give you some facts about it, okay? So it's the largest, you write down, largest man-made, so it's not natural, and when it was made, this reservoir, this lake, okay, they actually had to flood farmland, um, they had to move people and their houses. Uh, it was quite controversial. But obviously nowadays you wouldn't know. There is a myth actually that there's still some buildings, some ruins underneath the lake. Um, but that is, I think that is a myth, I'm not sure that's true. Okay, it is huge okay it is 250 miles wide um sorry 250 square miles so that's even bigger okay um so let's get some key facts so it's 250 square miles that's just massive okay you not easy to really even see from one side to the other it holds uh, 200, so there's another bit of data for you, 200 billion, 200 billion litres of clean water. This water is fresh water, it's used, well, in everything from drinking to showering. Um, that's just what it holds, but there's more water that enters the system and exits the system. Uh, at its deepest point, it is 52 metres deep, which is extremely deep. Um, and it has a dam that is one kilometer wide, and that dam provides um, hydroelectric power, which is brilliant. So that's uh, quite a large source of hydroelectric power for the UK. Um, and the other thing to mention is it opened a year before I was born, in 1982. Now. This water currently moves in the north, uh, the northeast. It's well used in that area, but there are plans, okay, to, to transfer it further south. So down here in the south, you've got London. Now the problem with the south is it doesn't get as much water as the north. So at the moment we are having to transfer water around the UK. Um, it's a long way from Kielder, but the plan is to run a transfer, okay, that will take it all the way from the south, um, sorry, from the north to the southeast, okay? So the blue is the existing transfers, the red is what is being suggested. And the problem is we've got high population, so down in the south, if you draw a little stick person and an arrow, okay, we have high population, which is great. We've got a lot of people wanting to live in the south, a lot of people in London and the southeast. Uh, there are less, a lower population in the north, but we also, we have lower rainfall, okay, which is, which is arguably the biggest problem. So if you draw a cloud and rain and an arrow going down. So it's sunnier and warmer in the southeast region, but that also then means that we don't actually have enough water for our population. We're having to transfer it. Whereas up here in the north, OK, 
okay, we have slightly lower population, but higher rainfall. So they have more water than they actually need in that area. Um, the problem is storing it. Uh, currently, Kilda Water, which is that huge lake, okay, they've managed to store quite a lot of water, but we really need more. We need more and more and more. Um, now, you might get asked about the pros and cons of a scheme like this, so let's get into that. So, big smiley face, positives, okay, of the scheme, and there are a lot here. So, we are firstly looking at um, an increase, and you might not expect this, but an increase in jobs, okay, so reducing unemployment. The main one was through tourism. That's because people can visit the lake and take part in activities there and it actually provides quite a lot of jobs and income, a multiplier effect. Um, the other thing to mention is the hydroelectric power. Obvious benefit, okay. So it's supposed to be a lightning bolt. Okay, renewable electricity, we can't get enough of that. Um, and also, the you know, the demand for fresh water is increasing. The demand for clean fresh water is increasing. So it's really good news to have this reservoir. Uh, one of the reasons that we're finding this demand is increasing is irrigation, which is a word used to describe water that farmers use for their fields. And that's going up because of climate change. So we're having slightly often drier conditions. Okay, and the other one is population increase. Okay, and the, with population increase, you just have more washing machines, you have more people showering. That's essentially the, the reason. Now, I don't want you to think this is a bad thing at all. There's really very little wrong with this situation, but there are some environmental negatives that we need to be aware of. So if we just put a sad face, um, and they're not all environmental actually, but I guess we could put social and environmental. Negatives. Okay, so the first one is high costs, okay? It cost 167 million to build. And I don't have the figure on how much it costs to run, but there will be running costs. Um, the other thing that's really key to mention is that um, people, families, okay? Um, children and farmers, you know, had to leave their homes, all right, um, and they were basically relocated, all right, so they had to move because the land was flooded, okay, so they, there was no choice, they had to go. Um, draw a fish because, oh god, that's the worst fish ever, what is that? Right, let's do that again, really not paying attention, there we go, there's a fish, this one can be facing <laughs> the camera, right, Fish. Um, fish breeding patterns were disrupted. Now, when you put a dam in place, it stops fish, as you might imagine, uh, swimming upstream. Okay, so, uh, so fish breeding, okay, and their food chains and their patterns, breeding patterns were disrupted, which has an impact on the ecosystem. Um, and then the other thing that we need to mention is that there is also electricity needed to pump this water. So as it's moved to these other locations and eventually hopefully down to London, that requires energy. It's not fed naturally by gravity and it, it takes days to move this water. So um, again, if you can kind of draw a lightning bolt and then put electricity needed to move the water. So yay, yeah, a little bit of an overview on Kielder water. I hope that's helpful. You can research that and look up. There's a few videos on YouTube about it. 
um, hopefully, well, you wouldn't get more than a six marker. So possibly just pros and cons or information needed. Okay, hope that's helpful.